Watch me turn into a savage in four years. 48 hours. Now what does it turn into? It turns into how hard we compete. How personal do you take this? How personal do you take your matchup? How personal do you take it if they don't slide to you? How personal do you take it if somebody beats you with round ball? How personal do you take it if somebody knocks the ball out of your stick after and you pick the round ball? Fellas, there's a lot to be said about character. What happens when you make a mistake? Do you sit back and you feel sorry for yourself? Or do you ball your fists up and get in a fist fight? Stopping us, fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. channel i'm very excited for today's video because number one i haven't released a video a vlog in a really long time i've done a lot of interviews in this past couple of months but i do love talking a lot and sharing what goes on in my brain so i'm excited to put out another vlog especially one that's been super highly requested i'm also really excited to be using my new camera Thank you. Shout out to my brother who spoils me. I love you. Thank you so much for this beautiful gift. I am going to use it till the lens falls off, literally. But I just want to go ahead and dive right in. So today we're going to be talking about my weight loss and my fitness journey. Who am I? So my name is Atali Correa. I'm a second year medical student and I have a bachelor's in exercise physiology. I would say that's like my only relevant background <laughs> to this. Um, but basically, you know, I'm an average human, a girl that just wants to feel more comfortable in her body. I guess you could say I want to feel fit. I like to feel healthy. I like to wake up and feel good um, and just, you know, invest in my own health. As a medical student, I feel like I come across so many like pathologies and, you know, just a, a lot of like health components um, in medicine and living with obesity for a long period of my life. I felt that I was out of control or I didn't have control over my body and my health um, as much as I like to think I did and I don't know one day I woke up on September 14th and I was like if I can literally accomplish anything that I set my mind to whether it be school whether it be pursuing my faith whether it be picking up a new hobby what like literally anything starting a new podcast starting a YouTube channel anything that I set my mind to I accomplish it and the one thing in my life that I could never do was lose weight. I would lose weight, but the, my issue was I would constantly gain it back. And so for a very long period of my life, at least since middle school, I always fell in that overweight slash obesity category. When I was in high school, I specifically remember going to like a Herbalife boot camp and they took my measurements and my weight and my height and they literally told me oh you fall in the obese one category and i knew what that meant because i was into the sciences and i kind of knew at that time that i wanted to pursue a career in medicine and i was like holy crap like you just told me i'm obese and to a lot of people, I mean, we don't like using the term obese and we don't like, you know, the BMI is not an end all be all, but, you know, obesity comes with a lot of other things, right? Um, whether it be wear and tear on your body or your blood vessels, and it could just lead to a lot of complications, which we see now in the United States with the obesity epidemic. So whatever, in conclusion, I'm going to stop rambling, but in conclusion, I just um, figured if I could set my mind to anything, then there's no reason why I can't lose weight. And so I knew that I couldn't continue to do like, you know, quick diets or um, trying to, I guess, like cut things out and then eating super clean one week and then binging or something like that, like with my friends for the next couple of days, you know, things like that. And so I knew I needed to do a lifestyle change and I woke up on September 14th and decided that I wanted to lose weight and change my life and here we are. 
So I'm currently living in Tallahassee, but I am from Miami, Florida. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is to share my experience and kind of what I've done so that you can accomplish your own goals. And so a little bit of background. Um, I've always tried to lose weight, but I was very unsuccessful. And there was a lot of excuses that went into that and a lot of, I guess, lies that I would tell myself. And so um, school has always been a huge part of my life ever since high school. I graduated valedictorian. Then I pursued my bachelor's in college. And as a pre-med, I was literally doing everything under the sun to make myself stand out. And so the gym would take the back burner and my diet would take the back burner as any other college student can attest to, right? Uh, so time was always scarce along with this whole school concept. Now I'm in medical school and time is so precious. It's like insane. But I figured and I always at every stage I was like, oh, when I reach this level, then I can really prioritize my health. When I graduate college, then I'll try to lose weight, right? And after I graduated college, I went to grad school. After I, I dropped out of grad school and started medical school, went back to grad school, I'm still in medical school. And then after this is residency and after this is becoming a practicing doctor. So really, if I didn't decide to take action now, it was kind of like gonna just spiral into worse obesity and you know bigger problems down the line so yeah that's kind of a little bit of background about myself and kind of what's kept me from losing weight and being at like the desired body and shape and health that I wanted to be at so how did I start? I decided to start by doing little changes and allowing them to add up. So the reason why I decided to do this is because I felt like whenever I would make a drastic change to my diet, I would do very well for a couple of days and then I would get a craving for, I don't know, let's say chocolate. And then I wound up eating like, I don't know, <laughs> half a bag of chocolate or something or I really crave like cold stone I'll go to cold stone eat cold stone and then I'll be like ah you know I already ate cold stone so I'm kind of full and I feel like bloated so I don't want to work out and you know that's just kind of how things would go but I felt like little changes would allow me to kind of like take one challenge at a time I started with drinking um, with increasing my volume of water a day and so what I did was I bought this gallon of water. I actually bought two. I bought one for myself and one for my mom. I mean, you know, plain and simple. At the time in the summer, I had this like before I really decided to lose weight, but um, during quarantine, I would listen a lot to Rachel Hollis and Rachel Hollis was like, you wanna solve a lot of your problems, drink half of your body weight in water. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So I ended up buying this water bottle and I found that starting with this is hard to drink i'm not gonna lie um especially now that i don't you know since we're still in like covid and quarantine i don't get a lot of movement in except when i work out so i kind of have to like consciously get myself to drink the water as you can see i'm already behind but we try to do what we can so that was one thing and another thing that i do is i add like ginger or i add lemon um sometimes i have fruit to my water so it can be like infused and i don't get bored of the taste of water but sometimes i just like plain water so um i'll drink it like that but that's where i started i was like okay i'm gonna try to drink one gallon of water a day and it really helps with curving my cravings it really helps me feel full like aside from my meals that i have every day um, and so usually when I would have cravings uh, or when I was like, I thought that I was hungry, I was actually thirsty. And so previously, before I drank a gallon of water a day, when I would feel hungry or bored or like I was craving something, I would pull on sweets or like little snacks, which in reality were just calories that I did not need. Um, so drinking the gallon of water a day, and I got this on Amazon, don't hate me, I know Amazon is like a monopoly, but <laughs> I got it on Amazon. Um, it was like 20 bucks, I believe, and it comes in all different colors. And that was just like one of the first changes that I did when I started losing weight. The next thing I did is I do, I drink tea in the morning and tea at night. So uh, in the mornings I have green tea with lemon and 
that's the first thing I have in the morning after I weigh myself. Um, and I don't weigh myself every day, but when I do, I go to the bathroom and then take off all my clothes and I weigh myself literally completely naked. <laughs> And I record it and then I go ahead and have my tea and then at night the same thing I I drink sleepy time and I just feel like It's really good for helping your body like cleanse itself um, Especially in the morning and the night. Um, it also helps with like digestion. It helps like again curve hunger So if I'm kind of like staying up late and it's too, like way past I don't know like my bedtime and my time to eat and I can like push to the next morning I'll have my tea and it'll really like I guess calm my stomach if I was hungry, which I think helps a lot. I stopped snacking. So in previous times, I was always kind of told that, well, there's always like this, this theory that if you have five meals a day, so like, you know, three big meals and then two snacks in between those meals, uh, you're good. And I have a very, number one, I have a very slow metabolism, but I decided that I was going to cut out snacks because my snacks, when I did have snacks, were usually like not junk food, but not the healthiest of choices. And a lot of times I wasn't really hungry for snacks. It was just I wasn't drinking enough water. And so I wasn't hungry. I was just thirsty. So I kind of cut out snacks and I just make sure I had three meals in my day that were fill filling. And if I ever did feel hungry like you know i drink coffee um or i'll have fruit or i'll have like carrots um things like that but i stopped snacking on like yogurt i stopped snacking on chips i stopped snacking on cookies things like that and so i really focused my time in making three good meals for my day and i eat between like since i wake up so i'll like make, make my breakfast since I have my tea in the morning, I push it as much as I can until like I really am hungry. And so I'll eat like around 10 o'clock and then I'll stop eating before 8 p.m. Um, on days that I go long and I just like I'm starving and I need to eat, um, I'll push it like I'll eat past 8 o'clock. But the ideal is to eat before 8. And I do have a lot a big focus on like my fitness component and so I do work out in the beginning again I started with baby steps I was like okay my goal is to work out four times a week and there was times that I worked out three times um, but once I was starting to be consistent with my four times a week even if it was only 30 minutes I started noticing that I felt really good and it was really helping me maintain my stress level my anxiety levels controlled because in medical school, you there is a lot of stress and there is a lot of anxiety, especially with exams and especially in the world that we're living in and society and like what's going on in America. So my workouts really helped a lot with helping me feel good. I also felt leaner and that helps a lot with my workouts as well. Um, so I just started feeling really good and I started doing five times a week, six times a week and now, um, I usually work out just about every day of the week, even if it's on my rest day, even if it's like a short jog, I try to get some physical activity. And the reason why I don't incorporate a rest day, unless I have a really busy week, then you know I'll give myself that freedom. But the reason why I don't incorporate a rest day is because we're in quarantine and I literally don't get any activity in. I walk to the kitchen, walk to my desk, walk to the bathroom, walk back to my desk, Sometimes I even like study for long periods of time in my bed, so I don't get a lot of activity in. So I don't feel the need to have a rest day, to be honest. Like that's just the way I feel. But everybody's different. But yeah, again, so I started with like little changes. I started with the goal being four times a week. And now when I don't work out in a day, like you can just tell in my mood, I am kind of irritable. <laughs> because working out really helps me like blow off some steam. So I, I've just really enjoyed doing it. And so what I would used to tell myself is like, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. But now I'm like, even if it's 30 minutes, like it, when I look at my screen time on my phone and the amount of time that I spend, for example, on social media, and I'm sure you all know that I'm pretty big on social media. I spend like 
a decent amount of hours a day on social media for being honest so I can't tell myself I don't have 30 minutes to walk around or jog around the block you know what I'm saying um, the time is there it's just a matter of you prioritizing it and so sometimes though I really enjoy my workouts and so I if it if my workout lasts an hour and a half because I'm like you know taking my time with it then that's okay but if I'm like pressed to get my workout in because I have a busy day then 30 minutes is the minimum. I always do cardio in my workouts. Uh, if I, I prefer running outside just because that really gets me sweating and helps me blow off steam. So I do do running around my block. I do an average of about three miles a day. If it's raining or if I don't get out before dusk, I do indoor exercises that get my heart rate up. And so if you follow me on social media, you see the exercises that I do. I'm not really gonna go through them. I also have a set of weights that I've kind of been growing over time. So during quarantine, as we all know, a lot of gyms closed. Um, not that I ever really went to the gym, but I was here in Tallahassee for a period of time and then I was in Miami. And so I didn't have a gym membership in Miami. So I would do outdoor workouts. And then when I came back up to Tallahassee, again, the gyms were closed and you had to wear a mask in the gym. And I'm not an anti-masker, but it is really difficult to work out with a mask. And I just also thought it was, I like hyperventilate when I'm working out. <laughs> and I just thought it was really disgusting to have my mask on and like breathing out a lot of like, whatever was coming out of my mouth, like whether it be like sweat dripping down my face, like I'm literally like hyperventilating in my mask and I just, it was just grossing me out and it was hard to breathe and there was not a lot of machines and I had to wait a lot in the gym. And so I tried doing the gym thing and I just could not do it. I could not do it. So I was like, I'm going to just work out at home. And as I started working out at home, I'm like, damn, I wish I had weights. And so I shop at Walmart. And so at Walmart, I started, you know, checking the aisle where they had weights and I started noticing that they would restock their weights. And so little by little without breaking the bank, I invested a little bit every every week or every other week in some weights and so now I have a pretty good collection of weights um, including for squatting some dumbbells I have resistance bands for my thighs for my arms I have my yoga mat and so I'll show you guys my um, workout room and so so this is my fitness room over here I have these weights for squats deadlifts I have a kettlebell a set of 15s, a set of 10s, and a set of 5s. And I have these resistance bands. I have these weights for my ankles. Um, and I have my shoes. And I also have these resistance bands. My yoga mat. And my mirror. And my makeshift um, bench. And my speaker. And yep, yeah, so this is my fitness room. And this is where I come to do weight training after I do cardio. So that was my workout room. And so I really loved investing in all my weights and my sets. When I went down to Miami again for the holidays, I took my weights with me and I was able to keep continue exercising all throughout the holidays. And so although I didn't, although I did gain like about five pounds over the holidays, I felt like I was pretty good at maintaining my weight. And then when I got back to Tallahassee, I lost like almost 10 pounds. So it just goes to show that when you start cutting out the excuses, for example, the excuses for me was, oh, I don't have time because it take, took time to go to the gym. And second of all, I didn't like to wear a mask at the gym. So those are just barriers that I needed to dismantle in order to be consistent with going to the gym. Or working out and so having this at home gym it's like okay what excuse do I have I literally just have to walk to the other room in my house to work out and so that cut out a lot of the barriers that I had previously I prefer that I mean if you enjoy going to the gym by all means do that um, but just kind of try to identify the barriers that you have into accomplishing something and dismantling those right, y'all so I wanted to give a quick snapshot of what one week of groceries give or take looks like for me um and i also wanted to highlight that all of this was less than a hundred dollars give or take sometimes i shop at publix but mostly i shop at walmart just because i think their prices are really affordable um but i just really wanted to highlight that 
I only paid 99 with 30 cents. I didn't even get to a hundred dollars. And that's everything that you see here. I do have some stuff in my house like bread, some potatoes, some um, bell peppers, some salmon, some chicken, those kind of things. And so these were some additional things that I got. That's all on here that I think would help me make more meals this week, especially fresh produce. I don't buy enough for two weeks at a time just because it does go bad um, pretty fast. And so I just like, you know, this is what I do just about every week. My diet is a really big factor. I know, I think science shows that like a lot of losing weight is 80% diet and 20% working out and I really think this is true because the minute I started changing the way I ate and what I ate and how much I ate I really started seeing the differences in my weight loss and how fast I would lose weight and so I eat a lot of protein whether that be like protein shakes or chicken or turkey or seafood I cut out beef and pork months ago maybe over a year ago um, so i really don't eat it i did it because number one the animals number two uh it just has a lot of fat that you really don't need carcinogens you know all that good stuff i'm not really gonna get into it but that's why i decided to cut out red meat and pork and just stick to like lean protein and i also eat a lot more vegetables than i did before before i would have salads but now i actually like incorporate a lot of vegetables into my meals as well so like i don't know i eat like broccoli peppers salads um, i do tomatoes and onions in my eggs i do a lot of avocado a lot of i know avocado is a fruit but I eat a lot of vegetables. When I eat fruits, it's like in my acai bowls, like strawberries, berries. So adding vegetables to my diet allowed me to like increase the volume without really increasing the calories and allowing me to feel full on good calories for longer periods of time. And so that's why I'm able to eat three solid meals a day and not feel hungry and feel happy with the meals that i'm having like it's actually my food actually tastes good and i know it's healthy so i feel better about eating it versus in the past i would feel full off of a meal but sometimes i'll feel bloated like maybe there's too much fat if i ate like for example i don't know chick-fil-a multiple times a week because they had it at school things like that um so just like really monitoring what i've been eating has helped so much i don't calorie count i don't think that's healthy at least not for me i just feel like if i have three solid meals and i'm not hungry and you know i'm just being conscious about what i'm putting in my food since i make all my food from scratch then i'm bound to lose weight and i'm bound to be in a calorie deficit if i continue with my exercise and i feel like i am always in a calorie deficit i do have my days where i have my cravings so I'll like make like um, a chocolate smoothie, let it freeze and eat it like ice cream. I do, I don't know, pick at, let's say if I went to my leasing office and they had a piece of chocolate, I'll eat a piece of chocolate, things like that. Or if I got free Chick-fil-A once in a two month period, like I'll eat it. But I was really good about having that balance. And I think I'm definitely eat healthier most of the time compared to unhealthy. Um, but I give myself the luxury so that I feel like I'm living life. And so when I'm presented with like unhealthy options, I can make a healthy decision in the sense that like, okay, if I have this high calorie intake now, then I'll eat a little bit lighter for dinner, you know, things like that. And so being able to keep that balance and maintain my sanity has really helped me stay on track. I think my weight loss and my fitness journey overall has had so many physical benefits. Like I've noticed like changes happen really slow, but taking my weight, taking my measurements and taking my pictures and seeing the difference over time has really like inspired myself um, to continue to go. It's also challenged me to be very patient because there's obviously days that I don't see results, but 
I do notice that I have a lot more energy than I did before when I wasn't working out consistently and when I wasn't eating good. When you start seeing changes in your body as well, like you start feeling really good about it because you're like, damn, like I'm actually losing weight. I see like the, the belt getting bigger on me, all my clothes is fitting me bigger and it feels good to feel lighter. Like, I don't know how to really explain it. And I've always thought, I've always thought I was beautiful even when I was at my heaviest, which was like 195-ish. I still thought I was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still loved my body. I still loved myself. I was still very happy. But I knew that I was obese and I knew what came along with that if I continued on that trend, you know, throughout my life. And so that's why I decided to change my life. And there's a lot of mental benefits as well. Like, it really allows you to train your mind. When I was studying for MCAT, I worked out all the time like throughout that and so when I got tired of studying I would channel that energy and that stress into working out and when I was done working out I felt more alive to continue studying and the same goes now that I'm into step studying that when I get tired of studying I go work out I take a breather I make myself meals and that's what I use as like my study breaks and so it's just like a win-win situation because I'm training my mind while I'm studying, I'm training my mind while I'm working out and I'm feeding myself good nutrition to help me like have the energy to study and have a peace of mind and just be happy with my everyday life, um, which believe it or not, I think is something taken for granted by a lot of um, students and people in professional school because it is very stressful and unfortunately, you know, mental health is not always the best for a lot of us um so really training your mind and investing in your mental health is really important and i think investing in your um in your body and your nutrition is like essential for that i also think when you push yourself th those extra like couple of minutes that you don't want to work out or you push yourself to work out when you really didn't want to and you push yourself the extra i don't know 30 minutes to study when you really didn't want to you're really training your mind to have discipline and you're training your body to have discipline. So when things get tough, when time is very scarce or stress is really high, you always default to what you trained yourself to do. And that's to keep pushing no matter what. And so this whole journey has really allowed me to like push myself to that to that point and to have that discipline. Emotional benefits. I can't even like begin to express how much stress and anxiety and frustrations are relieved after I work out. Like it's gotten to the point that it's like, girl, are you okay? Like you need to go work out <laughs> because I like I can get, you know, Zoom exhaustion is such a real thing, Zoom burnout. And so really getting outdoors and getting my workout in has just become so important to me so i also had gotten another question about meal inspirations where do i get my meal inspirations honestly social media is probably at the top i like to see what people eat and i ask people what is that if they don't have a recipe to share i look up a recipe myself or something close to it i also was a foodie before like i loved to eat out i still love to eat out but i don't because Restaurants don't care what they put in their food a lot of time in the sense that they'll add the extra salt and the extra condiments and the extra grease to make it taste good. And you can still have the same meal and it might not taste as good to be honest, but it can still taste good. You just can make a healthier version. And so sometimes that's what I do. There's an app called um, Lime. It's like a Lime meal prep app. Um, I used that previously. And they have like healthy options for meals for like, and it, it can out allow you to change for servings and stuff like that. So I did that. Although I felt like a lot of the recipes weren't that good. It was like a little too healthy for me, if that makes sense. Um, Google, like if I'm just like, ooh, this sounds really good. I'll just Google it and get the re recipe. A lot of my recipes though, is just like creativity. It's just like, ooh, this would sound like, this would taste good with this or, if I add peppers to this, it'll probably taste so good. Or if I add onions, if I add garlic, things like that. So a lot of my bowls end up being a product of my creativity. Being like, oh, I'm just gonna I have all of this in my fridge. Let me just throw it in a pot and see what it tastes like. So I really enjoyed um, being in the kitchen more and actually like 
getting creative with my recipes and, you know, changing things that I really liked before, but just making it a little bit healthier. But at the end of the day, it all came down to like making it a lifestyle change because you can eat healthy every single day of your life, theoretically, but you know, every once in a while as a human, you're gonna crave like some fatty foods, maybe some salty, maybe some sweet. And so giving yourself the freedom and variety and changing up your meals every week really helps with those cravings and like helps you feel content and happy with the food that you're eating. So again, focus on it being a lifestyle change and having that balance. Um, fitness inspiration, a lot of it comes from Instagram. So a lot of my workouts are like at home and it's just like exercises that I do. I mean, I've always been pretty active my entire life. I did cheerleading for like five years in high school, middle school. I kept up with the gym like all throughout college. What I lacked in college was my diet. And so now that I have my diet and the gym, going good that's why i'm seeing like such good results so I, I follow fitness gurus on instagram and they post their workouts so i'll copy their workouts literally and if i need to modify them i'll modify them and i don't care i have no shame in doing that but the key is i'm coming down to like the summary of my weight loss and my fitness journey and like just big takeaways the key is to stay consistent and trust the process and enjoy the journey like I didn't start losing weight with the idea of oh I'm gonna drop a hundred pounds you know what I'm saying and not that I want to drop a hundred pounds because I'll legit disappear but you know just to say for example at one point in my life I was at, a, at about 195 pounds on September 14th I didn't wake up and say oh I want to be 130 pounds no because you need to start with small goals and so I told myself my first goal is to get to 150 and I didn't give myself a time I just researched okay what's a healthy way to lose weight and it said one to two pounds a week and so I started keeping track of how much weight I was losing the goal was one to two pounds a week and so far since September 14th I was weighing about 187.6 and I'm currently weighing 163.4. So I've lost a little bit over 20 pounds. I'm almost at the 160 mark. And my goal was 150. So I'm about 13 pounds-ish away from that goal. And once I reach that goal, maybe I'll go a little bit lower. But I'm not in a rush to lose weight. I want to lose it gradually even if it's more slow than it is gradual because I don't wanna gain the weight back. And I feel that if I lose the weight slow, it puts less strain on my body and allows my body to adjust and have the time to adjust. So that's why I'm just taking it slow. I also am like, what's the rush, you know? I feel good and I love my body. I love the way I look regardless, even when I was at 195 pounds. So I'm like, what, you know, who am I in a rush for? You know what I'm saying? Like, who am I in a rush for? So I've just been like really enjoying the process and seeing like what works, what doesn't work. Sometimes I'll like, when I weigh myself and like if I don't eat so good, um, it's, it's kind of... It's kind of funny to see like the scale go up or go down and it's like you really can't cheat <laughs> You really can't cheat yourself because it's gonna show like when you weigh yourself, you know what I'm saying? So if you really put in the time and you really put in the effort, you'll lose the weight And you can definitely have like, you know, little things here and there But the whole point is to stay consistent um, and I track my progress with pictures, of course um, I bought a scale at Walmart to measure my body fat and to measure my weight and then I take measurements with a measuring tape of my waist, my hips, my legs, my arms and my chest and I do that every two weeks because obviously inches take more time to shred and then I weigh myself either every day or every other day and I just keep track of it in an app on my phone or I keep track of it written down. Definitely set realistic goals, love yourself, and invest in that self-love throughout the whole process. Be very patient, 
and I wish everybody the best of luck if you watch this entire video I hope it helped but make sure you are investing in these changes for the right reasons um, and remember that it's a lifestyle change so I hope this video helped if I didn't answer your question DM me and I'm happy to answer them um, I just really wanted to portray an authentic version of how I lost the weight and what my um, next goals are how I've been able to accomplish this and how I've enjoyed the entire journey so thank you so much for all the support thank you for all the love thank you for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe and check out all my other videos and all my future videos thank you so much and i love you watch me turn Mentally, into a savage in four years for 48 hours now what does it turn into it turns into how hard we compete how personal do you take this how personal do you take your matchup how personal do you take it if they don't slide to you? How personal do you take it if somebody beats you to a ground ball? How personal do you take it if somebody knocks the ball out of your stick after and you pick the ground ball up? Fellas, there's a lot to be said about character. What happens when you make a mistake? Do you sit back and you feel sorry for yourself? Or do you ball your fists up and get in a fist fight? It's about character. All that matters today is our response. Fall your fists up. Take the personal and get ready to get in a damn fight. No, there ain't no stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star.